Rodgers with three touchdowns, 268. But I didn't know if you thought that Baltimore would put up 30. And again, what a performance by Huntley. Two by air, two by leg, basically 300 total yards, no turnovers. And he, as you saw when he came in and played against Cleveland, loves Mark Andrews. Smart. Andrews is a star. 13 targets, 10 catches, buck 36, caught both of the touchdowns. Baltimore falls just short. They drop to 8-6. and six. Green Bay continuing to maybe make a push towards that one seed. They're now 11-3. and three. So, Aaron Rodgers ties some guy named Brett Favre. Heard of him. Yep, played for the same franchise. Now, Brett Favre also played for the Falcons. Mm. There you go. But... 442 of his touchdown passes were up in uh, at Lambeau Field. And, uh, of course, there's real games too, but you get the point. 442 from Aaron Rodgers, trailing only Brady and Breeze. And, and both Brady, Breeze, and Favre have played for other franchises. Only Aaron Rodgers has only played for Green Bay, although next year, who knows, maybe he'll be in a different uniform. Welcome to CBS Sports HQ. This season, Crown Royal supporting the local communities that service off the field at kickoffwithcrown.com. Brian McFadden, Jonathan Jones, I'm Eric Casilius. All right, JJ, um, this is the second time Baltimore has scored late, decided not to kick the point and go to overtime despite the fact that they have Justin Tucker. They went for the two. I was critical when they went for the two against Pittsburgh. I'm all in favor of going for this one. The last time you were in favor of going for it, this time you say what? They absolutely should have gone for it right there. And and here's why they should have gone for it, because you got to end the game. You can't give the football back to Aaron Rodgers with 40-some seconds left, even if he doesn't go down and get in position to kick the field goal, which maybe he will. But then you have to then go to overtime. You're down so many guys on defense. You have Tyler Huntley, who has played uh, magnificently tonight. But you need to try to end the game from the two. My issue is not with them going for two or BMAC. So much the play call, even though it wasn't a great play call, and I want you to get into that in a little bit. It was the touchdown before. With 4.47 left, Tyler Huntley had a three-yard run to make it a, a – they got to – it was 31-23. to 23. So you could go for two right here, and you could make it a six-point game. They decided to kick to make it that, uh, that six-point game. I needed them to go for two there. So you're saying if you know that if you score again, you're going to go for the two, try it there because then you only got to make one out of two to get yourself into overtime. You won't lose. And if you make the first one, then all you got to do is have Justin Tucker on to win the game and you apply more pressure. I see what you're saying. I'm with you. I can sign for that. BMAC, did you like the once they decided to get that last 42 second score, do you like the decision to go for two? I like the decision. I hate the play call. All right. You didn't like the play I call. What do you want to do there? And the thing about the play call, remember, they you uh, utilize a timeout before actually running that play. So they had an opportunity to go to the sideline, talk about it. Okay. So tell me what the Packers were saying in their secondary, because you've been in the secondary play yes. times Super Bowl champion. As- what are the Packers saying during the timeout? What are the Ravens saying during the timeout? Ravens should do more harm than good. I think it did more good. Good for because they could set up. Because now you get a chance to talk about what you potentially could get. And what do you now say? you get a chance to do your two point plays that we believe they will run, and not understanding who will be involved in that said two point play. And nine times out of ten, it's probably going to be Mark Andrews. So now, when they call timeout, guys, you guys know exactly what we're probably going to get. Something involving Mark Andrews. So make sure we highlight him and understand where he is. Also know that they're probably going to try to get Tyler Huntley out of the pocket. He just scored that touchdown by his legs. Improvising. Nine times out of ten, they may give him that type of option. But one thing you have to understand, every time you watch football, especially on Sundays, you see a two-point opportunity. What uh, what does the offense do they shorten the field they condense the formation when you do a sprint rollout a sprint pass you're basically making it easy for the defenders to be able to cover their guy because we're not worrying about the whole whistle so of the give me the play field. call you got a mobile you quarterback you got a mobile quarterback allow him to have a two-way option similar to that touchdown run that was a passing play yeah it was that was a passing play but what he did was he saw an opportunity to run to get into the end zone so you allow spread him to out, do the same thing so you spread your guys out yes and you 
look and you tell Huntley, listen, if it opens wide, do what you just you did. Sprint, make a move, give me a he little. He ran the touchdown from the five or six yard line. Yeah. That was further away than the extra point, the two point opportunity. But when you go out with a sprint pass, you just condense the formation. And would you only you, have one option to throw it would to. Would you rather either two. cover from the two or from the ten in that play? Two. Okay, so it's better. It's actually better yes. if I'm going to have to throw it. If I'm on offense, you want me to be backed up. I'd rather, no, I'm saying in that situation, if I had to pick, I'd rather cover you for, at the two right, that's what I'm saying. than the ten. Right. If they yes. took a five-yard penalty, you would actually would think that would actually help their chances. Right. I'm trying to, and I'm like, okay, you called timeout, and that was the play you came back on the football field with, right? JJ, what are you calling there? Uh, I'm, I'm right there with BMAC. I do like keeping the option of Tower Huntley's legs there and allowing him to create. I always hate cutting off one side of the field. And yes. I, I'd love it if an offensive coordinator, one of these gurus, uh, a quarterback's coach, explains to me why that is going to be a better option than and keeping the options open. All the time. But, but to me, it is, it's, it's very simple. I hate it when it's a got to have it play. You already, cut, you already are on a condensed field to begin with, as BMAC touches on. And now you are then. You're basically taking the field and you're taking a quarter of it. That's all you get. See, I like I, I like putting Huntley, just same thing. Just keep him in the middle. Yes. If it opens up, you go. I like flooding one side, crossing one guy over. Let's create a yes. little chaos yeah. across. And, Make and, them and, call and, and, a pick player or whatever and on nine, me. And, and then nine throw times to the open out of guy. ten in that situation, you're not going to get a flat out man-to-man -man situation. So rubs might not work, but understand it. You just got to get to the goal line and turn around and catch the ball. Right. And if there's not there, Huntley, do what you do. No, but I'm did. saying if they're running, if they run zone, then I'm flooding one zone. Oh, no question. And, and, but if they're running man, they're, I got to cross. Yeah. If they're running like, zone, I flood one side and I tell Huntley, if it's a zone, you're going to that side. If it's a man, you're going to get him on the cross. And well, let's do it. We all will would agree to this. We see the sprint pass not work more so than it does work in those situations. Because there's not a lot of field. There's not a lot of time. There's not a lot of maneuvering where Mark Andrews can go. The rush is coming at him pretty quickly. And you're going straight to where you're throwing I hear what the football. You're All right, Green Bay. Um, what do we think about the fact that they went into Baltimore and gave up 30 points? Now, they scored 31. Uh, it, you know, look, what's the mentality if you're a Packer right now? Hey, we're trying to get the number one seed. We checked the box. We got to win. Or do you mm -hmm. have concerns now about Green Bay, who just no, gave up 30 to a backup I don't have concerns because the thing about preparing for a guy like Tyler Huntley, there's not a lot of film on him. And it's not like you really game planning for him because you don't know exactly how they plan on utilizing him. But he let you up. Yes, he did. But they had enough to win. It, it would be one thing if Tyler Huntley was a starting quarterback for the last eight weeks and you got more than enough film to be yeah. able to put together a nice game plan for him. Tyler Huntley has... You don't, think you don't about know this. his tendencies. And, and think about this. Every time he's played this season, he's been successful. Because you don't have a lot of film out there for you to be able to dissect and understand what he does well, things that he struggled against. So me personally, this was like a trap game for Green Bay. I know they had a huge spread number, well. but this was like a trap game for Green Bay based on the... The, uh, not understanding what you, you heard everybody get. tell you all week Baltimore was so banked up and yes. Aaron yeah. Rodgers is going to light them up and Devontae Adams is going to do this and that and the other thing. Do you feel differently about Green Bay? Or do you, and if you do, do you feel better or worse about what you just saw? I feel worse about Green Bay. I think they played down to their opponent. Uh, I don't know that this was necessarily a trap game so much as if Green Bay brought their best stuff, this shouldn't have been as close a game as it was. I needed to see more out of Aaron Jones. He had 13 carries for only 58 yards. Okay, you say, well, it, was, it wasn't the front of Baltimore's defense that was banged up. It was the back end. Well, what did the back end do? Marquez Valdez-Scantling almost had 100 receiving yards, but Devontae Adams, they had a good plan for him. And remember, Jimmy Smith went on the COVID-19 list this morning. They, they're down Marlon Humphrey. They're down Marcus Peters they just have dudes back there and so the fact and you know Green Bay was facing Tower Huntley who okay you don't have his tendencies out there you don't have the film on him but you're still Green Bay's defense a defense that has played really well more times than not in the past six weeks so I'm a little disappointed by Green Bay I'm not sounding the alarm I'm not saying they're not going to win the NFC now or anything like that but I think they played down to their opponent today yeah I don't love their defense I think they're going to have to be the one seed and play at home and I know you say well last year they were the one it was a weird game against Tampa I think if they play that game 100 times in their building and Tom Brady throws three picks in the second half, they're going to win a vast majority of those. Oh, yeah. uh, if I'm Green Bay, I think if Green Bay is the one seed, I think they can go to the Super Bowl. I'm not sure I think that they can with that defense if they have to go on the road and go to places. And eventually they're going to get healthy to get Jair Alexander back. Which will help. Which will uh, certainly. Smith That's right. could come back as well. So those two guys alone definitely will improve the defense. Remember, now this year, as we keep reminding you, seven teams make the playoffs. 
but only the one seed gets the buy. You're used to the one and the two seeds getting the buy. It's not that way anymore. Two. Only the one seed gets the buy. So being that one is very important. Uh, if you're not the one, you got to play that opening weekend. Tampa Bay looking to get the one seed. Uh, you would think that that division is. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis. No yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.